When I was 16, I got a scholarship to study at United World College in Canada, a school that brings students from 100 countries to live and learn together with the aim of promoting peace and international understanding. It puts students from different countries, different backgrounds, different religions to live and learn together for two years. The school is located on the shore of the Pacific Ocean on the south of Vancouver Island. I attended the school in its unit setting. There were no mobile signal available in the area, so nobody has a cell phone. In that absence of mobile technology, it gives us a chance to spend more time with each other. I don't have to text or Facebook or call my friend. I can just knock on their door, look into their eyes, and have a face-to-face -face conversation. It was a special time in my life, disconnected to the device, but feel so connected to the people around me. My roommate and I, we would spend many nights talking about culture, politics, and the food we miss from home. I could feel her homesickness, and with her, my own. I built a lifelong friendship. I learned that each country had their own ways to peel a banana. And I also learned that it is possible for people from different religions, different backgrounds, different political views to live and learn from each other. The more we connect, the more we realize our responsibility for each other and come a responsibility of being a global citizen. I left the school believing in life unlimited possibilities in this connected world. So I go to college. At college, I study economics. And after I graduate, the hard part come. <laughs> As you know, looking for a job was not easy. I spent a lot of time thinking about what I wanted to do and who I wanted to become. So I actually draw a little graph of how I want to live my life. So I want to do something that create impact as economics. I love to draw a graph. <laughs> I love to do something that create an impact, but at the same time maintain my inner peace. In my job search, I actually looked at a lot of things and I came to a YouTube video where Neil Lich talked about his company, Dimagi. Is this a social enterprise that uses open source technology to save life? It uses open source technology, a simple mobile phone, to connect women from the village to health center, to send her information to the health center so the health center know what's going on in the field and can help her quickly. So I was thinking at the time, I used my own mobile phone. It's the same mobile phone for texting, Facebooking, calling my friends. But this concept of using mobile phone to save lives it's really something that I wanted to do and want, I wanted to try. So I joined Imagi without any background in technology. Starting from zero, I learned the language of tech and the language of health and translated it into mobile tools, extended cast to corner of the world that most few have been often ignored. So one of my first projects was in Zambia. There at health center, I saw a lot of pregnant women carrying their baby and waiting for doctors. It really reminded me of my own experience in Thailand, going to the hospital with my aunt. Hospitals are far away, too expensive and too crowded. My aunt, she would wake up at 4 a.m. and I was so sleepy and we would be on the bus for an hour and wait at the hospital for another hour for the doctor. But when I think back, we were really lucky. We have time, we have money, and we have transport to go to the hospital. Not many people have those. In developing countries where doctors are limited, basic health care are provided by community health workers. Have anyone heard the word about community health workers here? Can you show me the hand? Okay, so not many people know what community health worker is. So community health workers, they are the bridge between doctors and patients. 
as you know, in developing countries, we don't have many doctors. So community health workers, they are volunteers from the community. They are not professional health care. And in a lot of countries, they don't get paid. They do it because they want to do it. So they go, traditionally, they go door to door to each patient house and try to track patients over a period of time. They also do many things. They follow up with pregnant women. They provide counseling message to TB patients or support people living with HIV. So as I learned what community health worker is, it's really difficult for them to do a lot of this job. A lot of time they have to carry heavy registration forms and they have to write down patient information on a piece of paper. And after that, they have to walk sometime an hour or two hours to the health center to submit the form. And as you can imagine, there must be 100 forms at the health center. It takes a long time for the form to be processed. And sometimes it's too late to wait for the doctor to provide advice or make decision. So community health workers, they have to make decision based on limited information that they have. So as you can imagine, there's so many challenges for community health workers. They are volunteers. They don't get paid. They do many things. They receive little training. They don't have enough resource and guidance to do their work. So we realized that a lot of community health workers have cell phones. So what we do is simple. We develop an open source software called ComCare that can be loaded into community health worker phone. It's work on Android and also basic simple Nokia phone. So how it work? When community health workers go to see the pregnant woman or the patient, instead of carry heavy registration form, they can carry the phone that have patient information and details. So in that phone, there's a danger size checklist and it's a decision support for community health workers. So they can ask patient information and also they can take picture. They can record GPS location. And this information will be sent to the health center in real time. So imagine you are the doctor in town. You can get that information right away. So you know what's going on in the field. You know what's happened with the patient. So the danger side can be detected so quickly. And we also put counseling message audios, video, clip video into the application. And we found that it's really helpful because when community health workers show the phones to the patient, it's not just the mother or the patient who listen to it. Everyone in the community and in that family are so excited. They all wanted to come and see what's happened on that phone. So the people in the family also benefit from the help message as well. And if the mother has the danger signs, the health center we send back the SMS to her, remind her to come to the clinic. As you can see right now, we're working in 40 countries. A lot of community health workers in these 40 countries are using this mobile tool in their work to help them to work better and faster. In my work, people are surprised that I'm not an engineer or a programmer. I often tell them that the key to success in mHealth is not about application, but its ability to listen and connect to the community. We use design under mango tree approach, which we work together with the community health workers in designing the application together. So I remember one time we were building the application where one of the, we asked one of the questions was, um, how old are you? It's a really simple question, right, that you would put on the phone and you would ask the patient. So we test that out and we found that everybody in the village were 30 years old. <laughs> How is that possible? How is that possible that everybody in the village were 30 years old? Listening to the feedback and talking to a lot of people in the community, we realized that in this village, it was not the question that we're used to answering. People don't ask, how old are you? But in this village, we have to ask, which year were you born instead? So I learned that technology alone is not an answer. Apart from working with community health workers, we also teach 
and we also to spread the word, we actually host a ComCare workshop around the world, teaching different organizations, NGOs, and government and local leaders how to build this application. So the part that I really love about my job is that we actually create this ComCare exchange platform which allows organizations to build their own application. And after you build this application, you can share this app with other organizations or government around the world. For example, you are an NGO in India and you're working to support HIV patients. So you build an app for your own community health workers to support HIV in their own community. If you put this application on our platform, Comcare Exchange, this application can be shared with the government or organization around the world. An organization in Thailand that's working on exactly the same issue. We don't have to reinvent the wheel. We don't have to go and build application. We can just download it and use it for our project. So it saves time and money and allows organization to share the innovation. So you can see that mobile technology is not just connecting patients to community health workers or to the health center, but it's also connecting global efforts to, to fight the disease together. In my work, I really love what I do, and I travel to help a lot of organizations to implement the M-Health project. And I must confess that this is not easy. Many times, I struggle between impact and inner peace, if you remember my graph. A lot of times, I feel that I create a lot of impact, but feel little peace. Making impact is a bit stressful, as you know. There's millions of emails, a lot of conversation, talking to a lot of people. So sometimes when I feel down, I really think about the moment that make me happy. And those moments are the moments when I connect to people in a personal way. One of the moments happened when I was teaching an illiterate lady how to use a mobile phone. She said that she never used a mobile phone before and she don't think she can make it. It's so difficult. She don't even know what it's, it's like. And I told her, you know what? You really reminded me of myself. When I start on this journey, I wasn't sure how it's gonna work. And I'm not an expert. And I'm just from a small village and I am not sure how, how, how this journey is gonna take, but I just try it. So together, we learn how to use this application. It takes time and we make a lot of mistakes, but at the end, she make it. And she, for her, it's not just building an app, using a mobile phone to help the patient, but it's also empower her from someone who never used a phone, but now she can text to her family. And she's really proud of that. And being able to connect it to her in a small and personal level really helped me to regain my power. So in that struggle between impact and inner peace, perhaps it's empathy, which involves being able to connect to people listening and caring that helped me connect it to my own inner peace and be able to fully see the impact that I made. So I reflect back on my journey. I still remember my student days when the absence of mobile technology allows me to connect to the other people in a personal level. I really miss those moments. And sometimes I wish that we just don't have a signal. So we can just talk to each other more and spend more time with each other. But in my work, I also see the beauty and the power of technology that link patients to the health center, that link different organizations to work together. So in this two conflicting world, I trying to make sense of it. And I came to realize that it is not technology that create a gap between us. It is not technology that create change. It is how we use it. It is you and me who make it possible. It is not the technology that save life. It is community health workers who are passionate about what they do and be able to connect the people that make change. A secret ingredient in making technology powerful is empathy and a good heart. And the good news is, Everybody have that. You don't have to be an expert in M-Health. Everybody have a, that secret ingredient. Last year, 
I went for massage with my Australian friends in Bangkok. While the lady massaged us, we carry a long conversation in English. As we are about to leave, the lady told me, "How do you learn English?" It was my dream to speak English, but I don't know how to start. I wasn't sure how to answer her question. In that silent moment, I heard her notification from Facebook, "ting ting." So I said, "Oh, you have a mobile phone. You know what? You can actually download an application to learn English." And she said she never knew that before. So I teach her how to download that application to learn English, and she gave me another free massage. And she also, <laughs> so you can use that trick in Thailand. <laughs> so, so she also teach everyone, teach her all her friends to download an app to learn English. And she said that oh, now I can download an app to learn Chinese and do other thing as well. So as I reflect back on this long journey, I realized that I start using my phone for my personal life. And then I use my phone for my work, to help people to get better healthcare. But I realized that it shouldn't stop there. There are so many ways that mobile phone can do to change life, and you don't have to travel far away from your com from your own community to make change, and you don't have to be an expert in your field to do something great. You can just be you, and by adding empathy in everything you do. And I also think that mobile phone in your pocket can make change with empathy. Thank you.